In this video, we're going to explore how we can use the data structures here to create only one data set, but consisting of multiple data here. As you can see, when I, once I click on it, the data is starting to change as well. And this is very, very interesting because with this you can do so much more, but let's explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on bar charts with data structures in Chart.js. And data structures is very powerful and I'm going to demonstrate to you here a version of what you can do with data structures. So for example here what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the chartjs3.com website, go to the getting started section and in here just copy this chunk of code here, that's what we need. And once we have this, we're just going to paste this in here and then what I will do is here I'll just cut out the title replace this one here all right there we are so once i save this refresh we have a bar chart here so what i would like to do is i want to change this a bit so what we're going to do is the following we're going to change some of the bars here by adding some data structures to understand data structures you can go here to the charges documentation we use the latest version 3.5 go to if i'm not mistaken here general data structures and then in here, we can build multiple data structures here. And what I will be doing is this one here. We're going to use the parsing part here specifically. And if I scroll down, this will probably be the one. We're going to put it specifically in the data set here. And the reason why we're going to do it in a data set is we're going to play around with this specific data set. All right. So what what we're going to do here is we're going to put in comma and then here I'm just going to paste in this part here. We have here the y-axis key and this we will select later on something specific. All right. So what we're going to do here is basically to work with the data here. And data structures is very familiar if you ever created a bubble chart or a scatter chart. So basically it's like the x and the y values but but in this case we can change this to any kind of term we would like to use and then make sure that charge as the parsing and parsing basically means make something readable for something else so in this case we want to parse or make it readable for the y-axis where we assign the y-axis key so basically this part here would understand where is the value that matches it because right now this here understands on the y-axis it understands it needs to go up but now what we want to do is the following we're going to assume we have uh, companies that we would like to track so the labels here will be removed and well i guess maybe companies uh, it could be anything let's say from countries we just say here x and the x value here will start with basically indicating this here down since we remove the labels here we need to assign something else here and i'll just make it simple i'm going to select co companies from specific countries let's say india and in here we have the following values we have here the sales and this is for example coffee we can say here coffee company sales our or coffee company values doesn't matter so we have here sales, it could be 100, comma. Then we have maybe here another one. We have the cost that we would like to have. This could be 50 or let's say 40. Then we say here, final one is the profit. And this could be 60 and maybe, although we will not be using it if we say your company, we could just select here one, let's say, um, cafe, uh, coffee today I'm not sure this was the one I uh, but I'm just trying my best all right so we have another one let's get another one let's put in here five values and here we can say the uh, Philippines saying if we can make this maybe 20 and then we put here cost 20 more and then this well maybe this should be 70 and then here 30 and here we could say another coffee item we could say here coffee bean and tea leaf and then we have here another one is USA and here we have Starbucks and this could be maybe well they, they probably do some more sales so we do this now I'm just making it up as you can see this doesn't make any sense sorry and next year would be uh, Indonesia 
and here we have another one a big chain as well uh, what is that I'll just put it on 1000 so we have the numbers 0 and 600 and this would be of course uh, J -co donuts. what else so we have another one here uh what do we have more here oh, brazil, brazil is a nice one as well and then here i saw a nice one that was interesting as well milkshakers so they like more milkshake drinks there we are all right so we have these here now I'll just make this 200 i make this 80 and i'll make this 120. so we save this so what we want to do basically now we want to make sure that the y-axis understands that these are the numbers that these numbers here will be changed based on if we select this, that, or that. So what we're going to do now, put in a button. So we say a button. And then here, um, we will make an on click function. And then we say update chart. So it's a function. And this update chart will be, of course, the argument here is whatever we selected here. So uh, what was this one here? This could be the sales. So we say here sales with small letters the reason why small letters we want to grab this one here so then we're going to copy this and doing this here then we say your cost and then we say here profit and this will be cost and profit so now you understand why we are calling this here the values or financials 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 all right so what is happening now is that once we update this, we want to uh, readjust this to any other value based on the button we selected. So here by default, I'm going to just copy this here, put in sales. And if I save this right now, you should see here now we get the sales here. We can see here the, uh, the financials here, Indonesia, all right? It doesn't show here the company because we didn't pinpoint it. So in this case, we just ignore that. The most important one here is we have Indonesia, this, the sales was 1,000. So let's see here, is that correct? There we are, all right. So it grabs here the sales of 1,000. So now what I want to do here, uh, let's make here the function. Let me say here, function update chart. And in update chart, we will get here basically the y axis. So we can say here the y axis, which is our parameter. And this is specifically the ones here that we grab. So what we will do now is we'll just say my chart dot, and then we're going to get basically this one here. We want to reassign the y axis key. And to get this, we need to go here first to my chart, which is this part here. And then we go here into config and from configuration or config as the official term here, or the object name, we go to data. So we have to go to the data object. And in data, we are going now into the data sets. And here we have the zero. And the reason why is because this is the data set. It's only one data set here, and this is an array. So data set index zero. This is index zero. And then here we're going to get the data. Oh, sorry, we don't want the data here. But what we want is this part here so we need to go here from the data sets zero we're going here to parsing and from parsing you can see already we're going to the y-axis key and then we say equal to what well the new y-axis we assigned based on this parameter here which is the argument value of this so once we did that we want to say again my chart and then we say dot update and then once we update this it should show us the matching values all right so we have here now the sales and if we do sales nothing happens of course if we do cost you can see something is happening all right and then we do profit there we are again so let's make sure that this is really clear so i'm going to change here the cost i'll just make this one two three and sorry that's not three and this is four this should be three and this is five and then we say here i'll just make this going downwards 600 and here the profit would be 500 400 and 300 so we have a clear distinction of the different values here so now if i click on cost you can see here now i go to one two three four five all right and then i say your profit and it goes here 700 all up to five to, from 300 to 700 and there we are so with this 
you can play around and with these data sets you can do of course more options so if you're interested to understand even more with this or at least with the data structures i highly recommend you to check out this video here where you create links that are clickable on every of these bar segments they are all unique links and they're also based on data structures so you can find this video here showing or popping up on the screen right now